I almost spilt my glass of shungite pebbles to help purify it. Anyway, most of you have probably heard of Anne Rice in the Vampire Chronicles. Well, I'm not here to talk about the, those books, nor am I here to talk about Anne Rice. What I am here to talk to you about is the possibility that a vampire creature does exist or has existed or continues to exist or something like that on planet Earth. That is a Dracula, a Draco, an ancient, ancient being who lives off the life source of people, including actual blood. Yeah, so vampires are a part of myth. Okay, let's just hold whether or not it's true. Let's go into then what happens if there's a vampire that lives for thousands of years? Are they impoverished and destitute? No, they have lavish lifestyles and they live in mansions. Now, this is not to say that all people who have lavish lifestyles and live in mansions are vampires. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is vampires live a long time, become very good at life, and probably manipulate it and learn how to do um, black magic on the people so that they can control, manipulate, and have their way with goods, resources, and whatever their whims may be. Also, they have long-term thinking because, my friend, how old are you? I'm 56. You know what I would be considered back in the dark ages? I'd be considered a hag. I don't mind being called a hag or even considered a hag because a woman is a, a the triple goddess. Maiden, mother, crone. Just like the rose. Rosebud, blossom, rose hip. What is the fruit of the rose but the actual crone who has wisdom? to parlay onto the youngsters of her fold, meaning people that are in her community. <clears throat> so um, there has been this disrespect done through television programming, I have noticed. And this is not where I'm going to go, but a little side is that if you have watched television, the Partridge family was back in the days when the mother and father had respect and a voice, and subsequently the parents became stupider and stupider, and the children ever more brilliant. Family guy for one, um, and I'm sure there are others. But the parents are always buffoons. How do they even get things going? The kids are always in the know. <clears throat> Television programming shapes a mind and the shapes the future of human beings and the quality of life, which I'm not going to comment on, but I am going to then bring us back to the point, and that is imagine if there were such a thing as a long-lived consciousness in a body or dimensional field that has influence over the physical bodies or body of somebody <clears throat> and the minds of countless others. Let's just begin with the idea that a manipulative consciousness could maintain reign over the development of an infant world, <clears throat> Earth, and have their way with it because they have longevity and long view thinking. People were old at 45 and considered like hags at 55. <clears throat> I'm a hag, according to the olden days. But, you know, this book here is a really good one. Um, Clara St. Louis wrote it in uh, conjunction with Harold Kutz Villa. Um, Harold Kutz Villa is not somebody I endorse fully. He did study black goo, but he seems to have been compromised by the black goo itself. So... Although he is a physicist, geologist, and author living in Germany, um, and he researched Morgellon and all those diseases that come from the contrails that we do know exist. It's not a conspiracy. Um, these guys wrote this book, and they're commenting on um, cerebral inhibition, hypnosis, and programming, TV. So we're going to talk about, yes, the continuation of history, and I am going to bring up the witch hunts, and I'm going to show you the Native American Indians who were killed off at the end of the 18th century, 1800s. <clears throat> so by 1850, 60, 70, 80, 90, somewhere in there, um, they were all uh, rounded up into reservations or um, otherwise um, reduced to dependency on white people and impoverishment. 
I'm not going to go there right now. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, <clears throat> other than to say that American people, if you take a look at the Native American Indians as your closest, all right, I'm going to show you, as the closest history on your country where you can see genocide, that happened to you. But of course you wouldn't uh, see it because you have been effectively <clears throat> programmed <clears throat> by a program. <laughs> was it Cloverleaf? It was, uh, yeah, run by your own government. Oh, I had it perfectly here. And what I'm saying is the film industry was the first one to be used as a propaganda tool to get people to uh, believe in World War I. We didn't have the internet and ways to find out whether or not it was bullshit. And speaking of bullshit, there's a reason why we call it bull. It's because a bula was a lead stamp sealed on a document that was passed to the people that were the alcantic rulers um, who were set themselves up into positions based on uh, the Roman Catholic Church's rule. The Roman Catholic Church is the one who set up the seats. There were a couple of others that fought against that. And I'm not a historian. I'm placing the fact that if you take a look at history in the pre-Christian era, p people had tribes and, and they took care of clans. It wasn't until we had rulers that we had states. And taxes, might I add. So the Roman Catholics... Um, church were the ones that spread. It wasn't the Romans, it was the Roman Catholic Church. And they're credited have having the, the, the roads built. It wasn't their ingenuity that built the roads necessarily. It was the great builders, but we're not going to go there because those were all killed off. Um, <clears throat> you know, it took them centuries to build these great cathedrals. And um, they had the know-how that we don't have any know-how to do. We don't know how they did it, and we don't have the know-how because we killed it off. Um, not we, but, you know, they. They killed it off. So, um, World War I was uh, promoted by Hollywood, and they were in cooperation to create the propaganda. The U.S. Pentagon and the military-industrial complex, together with the elites at the New York Council on Foreign Relations and other select organizations of power brokers, developed a form of culture and media warfare. And here you have it. <clears throat> So, people are on this planet are so dumbed down by fluoridated water. So, I'm going to repeat myself a lot so that you um, can actually follow my thought. Because what happens with fluoride is it doesn't allow the brain's neurons to fire. So, you need to exercise practicing and paying attention to a train of thought in order to be able to do this. Otherwise, you short out after two jumps. And you can't get to the deep, significant reasoning and meaning and significance of anything because you'd rather just go back to what's on your cell phone. So let's go back to that postulate I put out. What if, if I didn't, let's do it now. What if a creature being or a consciousness was able to live for hundreds of thousands of years? <laughs> oh, they would have so much fun on planet Earth with its calmly beautiful human beings, us. So, yes, it's been going on for a long time, not just as early as World War I. Um, but that is our recent history. World War I never needed to happen. World War II never needed to happen. These are all needless wars, and they don't benefit us, and we're all sold a bill of goods, and we're all sold some sort of humanitarian reason why. And I'm not going to go into it. You go into why we ever fought World War I. You go into why we fought World War II. And whatever happened with Hitler and stuff, okay. Do you know that at the very heart of the matter, he was looking to extrapolate Germany from the Rothschild banking system? This is all about money. So take a look at what Syria is trying to do. And then you tell me what's going on here. So the Native American Indians at one time were wonderful, fierce, and beautiful <clears throat> And uh, here's some examples of the magical medicine men. These would be the scariest. Um, look at this guy, though. 
knowledge, wisdom. Gosh. He would have to have a very strong medicine woman to be his partner. Um, look at the beautiful faces. 1899. So somebody had the wherewithal to actually record this before the Indians were stripped of their uh, Indian garb, which they were. Um, children were taken from their family. They were stripped of their native garb. This is in the 1800s, folks. Okay. Not that long ago. They prayed to the Great Spirit, the Creator, that I am telling you was here in the hearts and beings of the people and in Mother Earth herself long before a, a religion times three, okay? Because things come in three. Three is a magic number. The demonic forces know that. If you can divide that entity into three and then get all three to fight amongst each other, the Jews being the chosen people, the Christians being some sort of watered-down version of whatever the Jews gave them in the Old Testament, which is the Torah, which is scary if you read it. And then this whole New Testament thing of books written by men with an agenda and the Nag Hammadi text, which John Lamb Lash has um, been able to scour and interpret to the best of his Gnostic ability. Gnostis, Gnosis, Gnosticism, knowing the individuals who were killed off by the Holy Crusades were alive and well in Native American culture. And then they had to get killed off. And in fact, you know, maybe these people are our ancestors. I mean, I don't understand how we, could, we went from this beautiful culture that loved nature. Sure, we had squabbles amongst each other, but we didn't practice complete genocide. And we certainly didn't try to take ownership over anything that wasn't rightfully our own. There's a lot of arguments to my reasoning, and I'm not here to argue. I'm here to show you what happened. This is how they live. And they were reduced um, because here they're showing for, again, for the camera before they wipe them all out completely. This is 1880, and um, they're showing, you know, the horse had come by way of Spanish conquistadors and, and, and shipwrecks and stuff, so, um, and then the rifle. That was 1880. This is 1871. Um, this is uh, a man, um, an Uti warrior and his son in 1871, 200 years after the horse and firearms had begun the transformation of their world. Okay, so in 1671, somewhere around then, um, the Indians got horses. <clears throat> very spiritual people, very beautiful. I'm not going to go into the trail of tears right now because I'll start crying. But what I am going to say is that because of Christianity, um, these beautiful people were taken away from their beliefs and their power, but it was still able to resurface, especially since shamans use the telluric field of the earth to access records. So we do it by way of books or talking to each other and through songs. It also was hidden in symbols, ciphers, sigils, and in um, the telluric field, which is an energetic field that is accessed by a shaman. So symbols are very important. Um, I talk about symbolism, and what I'm saying to you now is going to refer back to what I was talking to you about, which is, what if there was an entity that was here for a hundreds of thousands of years, but let's just use thousands. 
So if somebody knew how to manipulate the masses through religion, let's say they're 2,000 years old. So they're well aware of how to continue to do this. And it's been done through television programming and the complacency is effectively here. I'm not expecting the zombies to wake up. We are in the zombie apocalypse, you know, apocalypse. And the, just because enough people do something does not make it a, a sane practice. Walking around with your face in your, in your device. <clears throat> Unless you're trying to find a restaurant and you're on your GPS, there's no reason to be doing that walking at the same time. Um, in fact, see what happens if you put that thing away and put it on airplane mode for like five hours at a time. Friends and family will panic. <laughs> Tell them what you're doing first. Say, hey, I will be available for five hours. I'm going to see what it's like going through withdrawal. That's not my point. My point is that we have been a manipulated um, culture. And it de definitely started with the witches, but Americans are especially gullible. Uh, and they are, don't even take a look at what's being taught to these young people, these young minds at the college level. And we're watching all of this crazy stuff happen where Fausto Antifa people are actually penalizing free speech. They're actually so brainwashed. They're the zombies eating off of the pain that they inflict upon others by way of beating them, um, spraying them with pepper spray, like, let's just go back to the provocateur gay guy from England's, um, whatever, I forgot his name. He wrote a book, something about dangerous, and he's blonde, and he had this fetish for black guys. Anyway, that guy, he couldn't speak at Berkeley without protests, and the police were ordered to stand down. So, yeah, what basically is happening is the chickens are pecking each other's eyes out, and you, if you're doing stuff like that, are a chicken. Um, so... I, I've re been reading and referring to books such as this one, Saving Jesus, okay? So this guy knows about the reptilians. He, he, he worked at the Vatican. Um, he was accused of pedophilia, the, um, and I think that was after he left the church. Uh, he left the church because of, of what he discovered, and he got accused of things that he didn't do. But he is um, basically squeaky clean from my, my understanding. I'm not here to... Under, or, I'm not here to... Um, uncover his uh, personhood. I am. I'm here to actually relate to you the knowledge that yes, our history has been manipulated, and that history includes Jesus. Jesus was not a salvationist um, entity, human being who came here to die for our sins, because we never sinned. There is no such thing as original sin. Wake up! It was invented. Original sin was invented. Why was it invented? It was invented to gain control over the masses. So when you kill the Gnostics, the smart people, the ones that know, and you kill the witches, um, the ones that were practicing midwifery and herbal potions that healed, you pretty much have a bunch of useless people around. So they really can't fend for themselves. They're cute and adorable, but they're not that bright. So that has been what's going on. However, genetics do have recall and more and more people have been coming in with recall. I am one of those people. I came in with recall. I'm working on total recall and hopefully like Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in the movie uh, Total Recall, I don't have to pull something disgusting out of my nose. <laughs> oh man, have you seen that scene? He, um, he, he discovers anyway, it's sort of like spy, counter spy and, and it's interesting but it has, the cigar scene where he discovers that he's an asshole and he decides to go the way of the good people because he was a, a double agent. And he himself went against his, one of his own personalities. He, he discovered his evil side and then he decided to live and disbanded his evil ways. Okay, is that enough for you ADD people? Uh, let's go back to the idea of what happens if there is a, a intelligence that sees the long-term effects of its social programming and it, it um, is under uh, the principal law of the universe, which means it has to hide the obvious in plain sight. So it had to call itself TV programming to let you know it was going to start programming you. 
And that so um, also in the justice system, contrary to the tarot card, the Lady Liberty is blindfolded and she's um, measuring um, shit with gold and, and it would be the same, right? So basically, there is no justice in the justice system. And uh, these two are the middle cards of the tarot. Now, what I am going to say is that the Jewish people, um, I believe, were a tribe or a clan. I, in my book, they didn't escape, um, what do you call it, slavery. Moses didn't leave them from slavery. This is just in my feelings, my feelings. My feeling is that they were kicked out of uh, wherever they lived in Egypt. In their exodus, they were kicked out. Okay? So that's my theory, and that I'm not saying that the Jewish people in of, of themselves are bad people. I'm not. My first boyfriend in college was Jew ish. He still is Jewish, but I never asked him much about his religion. And then my really good friend Stephen Diamond, you know, he was Jewish too, but I don't know what kind of Judaism they were. Uh, I do know that they did study the Kabbalah, and that is really interesting because it ties in with the Tarot, but I don't know what came first. I'm not a historian. I'm just sort of pointing things out to you. So these two cards are the very center of um, the Tarot. We've got Justice unblindfolded, and then we have the Wheel of Fortune. Um, and so those are the middle cards of the Tarot, which we'll go into. Uh, so learning what symbols are is what I'm suggesting will put you on a genetic common ground to those parasitic creatures who are sucking the life blood out of our planet, ourselves, and our ecosystem. And just to let you know, the first card is the fool because stepping off into um, the unknown with the faith, look, note the flower, note the dog, that's all symbolism, my friends. And the zero is a cipher. And the cipher is for Pluto, which is, um, to me, the planet of birth and um, resurrection. And that second coming in Christ very well could be you getting that you yourself have the Christos in you and through you and that you are a golden child of Gaia Sophia. And all of this war and hatred is unnecessary. It's just designed to create further division. And um, so you uh, make you like basically chasing your own tail and be a hamster on the wheel. Now, we're all hamsters in the cage. What happens to hamsters? They, don't, they kill each other when they're too close quarters. So they're creating close quarters. Um, we call it sustainable cities. And... Uh, the wavelengths that are going through the cities are what's wiping people out now. They no longer have to do it. The witch hunts. Let me bring out Bringers of the Dawn. I'm pretty sure I have that book. I wasn't going to talk about it, but maybe now I won't either because I can't find it. But let's just talk about what the last card is, okay? It's the world. <clears throat> so the first card of the Tarot is the Fool. The middle two cards are um, <laughs> justice and the wheel of fortune. This is this is a tell-all for what's happening in our life today. So, in order to put you on equal ground with those individuals that have lived for thousands of years, at least since O. <laughs> okay, let's just deal with that cipher for now. These are the two middle cards. And then the last card is the world. Take a look. What do we see? We see the bull. We see the lion. We see the eagle. And we see mankind. That's the last card of the tarot. So to me, this is a really good sign, um, meaning the hints are always before your very eyes. They can't lie. So in the end, the world does succeed. She's having a grand time. The bull's a little bit pissed off. Now, I found out that bull, the reason why bull, bullshit, bulla, is because bull um, and the bull um, image 
was put into place after the Mother Earth religions were um, like killed off or sent into the heaths and the countryside. So um, let's see if I can find that picture. Yeah, they had to vilify the female. So this bull came on, which were the leaders um, who who had these. That book is really interesting. I need to find it. Let me show you Burning Times. This book will show you the... Um, oh, fell. No. The um, bula was used as the seal. Um, in this book here, I found a lot of very interesting facts and... Some of them are, you know, this person, uh, William Manchester, um, apparently studied a lot, and it has wonderful details about medieval, uh, the medieval world, and we do discover that the Roman Church is behind the killing of witches. They promoted it, and the only reason why it got stopped is because they didn't have anybody filling up their, pro their um, congregation. There was nobody else left to go to church and listen to what they had to say. And also, okay, they did the church in Latin, and the pagans didn't know what they were saying. All they wanted to do was go back to their fields and tend them. They had a completely different calendar. Um, so I'm looking for this where it tells you what the word um, is, which, a lot, which then I, I put and go, oh, that's where the bull crap came from. So anyway, seals were passed down. They, and they were basically from one ruler to the other. Ah, oh, I found it. Here it is. It was bula, which is to me the origin of bullshit. Um, <laughs> it said, and this I couldn't find. Um, basically, the crowning of kings was a conspicuous claim that they had the divine rule, uh, divine right to rule which was characteristic of the Roman Catholics' perpetuation of the Christian domination of medieval Europe. These rulers would show up saying, I have the divine right to rule because I'm closer to God than you. And then they would, um, let's see, proclamations for the Holy See, S-E-E, -E, Holy, called bulls because of the bula, was a leaden seal which was made official when recognized in royal courts. And of course they were. They were the archons the rulers. So the Archon infection at least began in the year zero, which is a cipher. So why don't we, because they can't lie to you. They have to tell you the truth. They have to tell you what they're doing. And if you can't figure it out, if you can't see this, and then they, they, then they take and they make up creatures like Medusa, which are horrible ladies. Oh, they turn men into, like, salt. And again, the word pagan comes from Latin paganus, which means country dweller, because they had to escape the cities in order to freely believe their own beliefs without getting burned at the stake. <laughs> burned at the stake, it began in Germany. Germany seems to be the hotbed, pun intended. And the geography. Okay, the European witch hunt was not uniform. The death rate was highest by far in German-speaking lands and their immediate neighbors, especially Poland. France had some. The British Isle was separate uh, from all of that. Um, it, occur it occurred frequently um, in Scotland, but not that much in England. Hmm, I don't know why. Either that or it wasn't reported because London's there. <laughs> London Bridge has fallen down. Uh, witch killing did not stop all at once, but tapered off as the executions became infrequent. After the, they couldn't torture them anymore, they could no longer burn them at the stake slowly or throw them into water with their thumbs in their hands tied to their feet. Oh, no. They then hung them. <laughs> Something merciful like that. Oh, and by the way, women weren't allowed to defend themselves in court. So if somebody accused them of being a witch... They were a witch. Okay, in 1682, in France, Father Louis de Barres was the last person. Father Louis de Barres was the last person to be burned alive in 1745. And then um, 
In Germany, it was Anna Maria Swagel, who was killed in 1775. 1776 was the so-called birth of our nation. And also during that time in 1650-something, in that uh, the 100 years before this, uh, the last witch in, in Germany, um, Salem. They wiped out whatever herbalists and midwives made it over on ships. So the Americans are so stupid because they were, the herbalists were killed off early. Um, herbalists were killed off in this book. I have a lot of little, see that? I've been looking at stuff. I got pieces of paper. But now I showed you where the bullshit came from in the cult of the horn god. All right? So um, people did not worship the devil who automatically, granted, black magicians probably existed and still exist. But most of that witchcraft is being done against you, and the fear of witch and witchcraft was perpetrated, and you even find it in children's library books, where it talks about witches indeed um, are, are companions of the devil. Now, pagans didn't even believe in the devil. <laughs> Christians brought their devil with them when they invaded our countries. So what happens? What happens if... Um, if people are able to actually rewrite history, and that's probably what happened, um, they wiped out the memories of people um, by killing their uh, wise men and women and witches. They make them dependent on their uh, barbaric medical practices by killing the herbal ones, and then they make them illegal. And uh, and then in America, you know, okay, worldwide, you can't have cannabis. I'm not promoting pot. I'm just simply pointing out that China is, is known as being called the land of cannabis. And it was used for everything, including ropes, and it was some medicinal um, thing. But if it's outlawed by the governments, do you really think the, the government has your best interest in mind? Especially since the war on drugs is a battle cry. War on drugs is a battle cry. The United States government themselves um, developed LSD, and the, the uh, U.S. government themselves are the ones that have been, um, uh, they're, they're the drugs dealers, they're the arms dealers. They don't care who they sleep with. And they, meaning whomever are the, the Draculas, the Dracos behind this, whoever are the reptilians, whoever are... Whoever is and what collective is this embodiment of consciousness with this hive mentality, the ability to telepath to each other, which we don't have anymore, which is why you need to get back to magic and to the earth, because the telluric field is how you get mastery over your memory. Of course, they don't want you to know that. That's why they build concrete. doesn't conduct the earth telluric field. Ooh, no. Yeah, so here's more pictures of, like, our lovely sisters hung while somebody else who probably convicted them is as happy as can be. And then guess what then happened? The Black Plague. Yeah. Want to know why the Black Plague happened? Because you killed the witches, and they're the ones that had the ability to cure you. The um, thieves and stuff had clove and eucalyptus and lemongrass, whatever they had in that magic time, uh, whatever they had in that magic... Um, which would do it? Potient. It was basically a perfumery that killed vermins, fleas, and things like that, and kept bugs off of you. So you were never bit. But um, <laughs> things then became uh, very, very dark. It was most certainly the dark ages. That's what happens, and people's health declined. Because what happens when you kill all the individuals who know how to heal you? You get sick. So the countries got sick. And, of course, the Christian Crusades kept going on and on and on and killing more and more and more. But, yeah, here's a picture of the midwife. And at the same time, they are charting that child's astrological chart. All right, there's a saying, millionaires don't consult astrologers, but billionaires do. That's because the billionaires, who are the black magicians, because they are the Dracos, or the, the somehow informed um, of the nature of the truth of our reality, which is why um, astrology was de court of made stupid, and our astrology pertains to anybody and everybody when you read it in the Sunday newspaper. 
but um, a midwife and two assistants helped the birth of a baby around 1550. A pair of astrologers are studying the position of the planets and stars casting. They're not casting. They're capturing records so that <clears throat> that individual won't have such a difficult time. If it has Mars in some house that makes it confrontational communication-wise, it will allow the parents to help that child discover that propensity of weakness so that they can then use that gift later. So if you have the ability of confrontationally having a verbal contest, you would make a great trial lawyer, for instance, or debater, or orator, or an actor, or something. But if you were to spend your entire youth fighting people confrontationally with words, and you didn't, and your parents weren't able to teach you how to direct that in a um, productive way, it would become self-destructive. That's why people are so frustrated nowadays. Nobody knows their gifts and attributes. Because parents are, besides circumcising their boys, which is a barbaric practice, um, they aren't, they're not doing um, astrological charts for their children. That's what, that, you, want to turn, you want to turn our society around? Stop traumatizing women at birth. Stop tra traumatizing baby boys at birth. And do the astrological horoscope for that individual so they'll have an easier time navigating this through this quagmire called life. So anyway, this book, it's a children's book. Let's find out what they say. I have told you this, and Candy Savage wrote it. Of course, she's the expert on 20 other site, um, 20 other uh, various um, specializations. So she got her information directly from another source which obviously is biased. This is the definition of witch. A person, usually a woman, who has made a deal with the devil and gained the power to perform evil magic. That's not a witch. A witch comes from the word wit, which is from German, which is to know. We have witty. Oh, you're so witty. German wit, to know. Witch. Wicca. Whatever. And, um, okay. Well, let's go to see magic, shall we? A magician. So, a magician. Ooh, who are they? A mag um, They use magis. A great wizard who has a deep understanding of hidden realities. Magi. All right. The magi, the three magi. In the, that biblical story, it is interesting to note, they all followed a star. There's a star in the east. It was Vespurus. It was Venus. It was the well, evening star, folks. It was planet Venus. So, magic, a way of understanding the world based on the idea that the natural world is alive with invisible forces. The practice of magic is the art of controlling these forces. See also science. Um, a way of understanding the, the world based on the assumption that the physical world is governed by physical forces. See also magic. And you go back and forth, back and forth. So, basically, astrology... <laughs> the magical art, the magical art of calculating the influence of the planets and stars on people's lives. It's based on the idea that radiation from heavens affects what happens on Earth. Because we're all electromagnetic beings. We have electrochemical nature. There's a pulse. And that pulse, my friends, is exactly what they're using with the 5G towers to, guess what, wipe you out. They don't have to kill you anymore. They just have to wipe out your mind. Have you gotten this far? If so, pat yourself on the back, congratulate yourself, and say, Wow, I actually was able to follow a train of thought. Here we have it. Bringers of the Dawn by Barbara Masiniak. You know what? She wrote this book in 1992. All right, unlocking the history. DNA carries the coding for this genetic material, and its helixes are made up of light encoded filaments. You are made up of light encoded filaments if you have DNA. Tiny gossamer threads that carry information the way fiber optic systems do, which are modeled after the human energy system. So. What she says in the early part of this book, I would like to find it, please, about the frequency. Where is it? I highlighted it in English. All right, your frequency is how they're going to get through to you, so it would behoove you to actually protect yourself somehow. Um, thought creates, so what you can do is start creating around yourself. 
uh, a tetrahedron shape um, like this. Okay, sacred symbol that's used in its 2D form as the Star of David, um, which doesn't belong to the Jewish people, but they've adapted it, just like the circle does not belong to the Japanese people, but they've adapted a red circle on a white background to show they are the land of the rising sun. And so the Jewish people, you can't blame them for using such a powerful symbol, but uh, you yourself should not be prohibited from using the red circle, or a circle for that matter, or the Star of David, but somehow we are. Um, and I'm not, and neither are thousands and thousands of others who've actually learned how to build this energetic system around their third eye, their thyroid, their cells, their body, and their brains. To be able to do this, you use your imagination. Oh, imagine that. Use your imagination since the day you were born. Did you ever do that? I did. I looked out the window because we didn't have televisions. So there was something important I wanted to share with you in one of these books. Now I can't find it. And it's basically Barbara Masiniak's Pleiadian people telling her that um, frequency is how we will get usurped. Not uh, in, in our desire to grow and become the fullness of our spirits. It, it's going to be through that. So it's also going to be through that that you can plug into the telluric energy of the earth. <laughs> Your heart to the earth and feel that through your horror line, your own energy body and then connect up through that, through the sun, through the core of creator, through the core of the um, the galactic core. So we're in the third limb of a four limb galactic wheel and We're now in alignment astrologically wise um, with the galactic core. So that's how you can get your information too. Because energy runs in waves and frequencies and the galactic core is sending you and me and everyone else on this planet uh, wavelengths for you to do as you will. It's free energy and you don't need your government to tell you it's okay, you have a stamp of approval, you have a bula to use this um, to your heart's content. Let's see if I can find what I was looking for in these others, because look, I read her a lot. Um, when I first discovered there were black forces on this planet, I went running. I put my head in the sand. I was like, la, 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 la. It can't be true. It can't be true. But more and more evidence that came up um, basically allowed me to realize that but during the time of this book, I was still trying to have self-acceptance and love myself. Um, because that is admittedly the dark forces that be did create a program that was self-loathing um, and all of that we're going to have to do a whole thing on her because I was not prepared I was prepared with the other stuff and I cannot find where I'm, I can show you the um, transcription of what the Pleiadians said through the vehicle Barbara um, Maseniak but I tell you basically said that um, if you understood that energies are manipulatable and that they are, then you understand that within cities, the way they will wipe out the free thinking individual who allows it is by radio waves and 5G technology, which essentially sort of is a mind numbing and allows you to be a autotron on bot thought and you follow with trends and you become a predictable animal and you work um, and the 401k system that was implemented um, by those in the um, was it Ponzi scheme you know basically the top ones that started it uh, Ponzi scheme uh, this, it's a Ponzi scheme for sure and it's not that you won't get money and you won't benefit but it is a Ponzi scheme if all of us are sort of put everything money into 401k and then the government tells you how it's going to be used. Gosh, there's so much to tell you, but I'm, I'm going to stop there because um, I wonder if our forefathers were already infiltrated. Um, in my opinion, Lincoln was um, seated in the rain. He's heralded as a great guy, but he's put on the penny. And I, I just smell a rat eating my face when I take a look at that whole thing.
of the North and the South and, the, and all of that, and the slave trade and all of that. Basically, all they had to do was say, yeah, you can have slaves, but you can't beat them, and you have to pay, pay them fair wages, and if they want to move away and own their own property, once they can, they can. <laughs> I mean, come on. Instead, you have to have everybody agreeing upon it, and everybody getting killed. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, who sold the weapons on that one? See, war is unnecessary. All you have to do is sit at the round table and have a discussion and let people decide. But because we got taken over by those Dracos um, that are seated human beings in the brain and created uh, a war-like um, personality and um, complete 100% disrespect for life, uh, they had their way. Um, and we're in the end of that. We're now in that because we're waking up and on the edge of the golden era, uh, I'm postulating, I'm, I'm suggesting to you that we do have, in the end, victory um, because it's just a natural cycle. That we've had to go through, all the things that we've had to go through, is saddening. And I cry sometimes. Um, but for me personally, coming to my own understanding of this torturous history, I am... I'm, I'm happy by the reminder that it started in the year zero and that that makes the year zero uh, the key to our very own uh, freedom because zero is a cipher and that cipher is a symbol of regeneration. That's the beginning and it's also from the... the uh, the, the fool is a zero, and the world is... Sin I showed you those cards. I'll do it again. Okay. We're right here in the middle. of says, well, justice is now prevailing. So we're in, we're in self eyes correction for sure. Um, justice took the blindfolds off, and then um, that's card number 11. Wheel of Fortune came before that. Okay. This is when... We start going, aha, uh -huh, we're the Rome, we're the golden children, let's take a look at what's going on here. Everybody has their little books out, they're all trying to figure shit out. But who's that character? <laughs> what's going on here? And then, all right, that's when card 11 kicks in. And here we are at card 22. The female comes back, the male respects the female. Who knows? I'd like it to be like that. Um, the female's got to respect the male, too. Stop taking his um, foreskin off. That is just plain ugh, cruel. Let's remember the uh, pagan holidays, because you probably celebrated them. And the, the one coming up is Lunasa, and it's celebrating um, the harvest. Now, traditionally, it started from July 15th to August 15th, but we have August 1st as Mother's Day um, because Luna Saw honored his mother. That was the true first Mother's Day. Um, and his mother um, helped this tribe, this clan. So I'm going to drop off there because we're, we're like well past, um, you know, 45 minutes. And uh, hopefully you had some popcorn and a cup of cup up. I had some water water. The books that I've referenced, Saving Jesus. Um, this guy, he knows a thing or two. Um, I showed you the other ones. Th this one, the Native American Indian one. Um, read this and feel your history uh, and understand that it wasn't that long ago that an entire indigenous people was practically wiped out through genocide. They don't have a Holocaust museum, do they? Do, do they have? Do they have that? Uh, and uh, I was given uh, either Lakota or Dakota symbols to use. I'm going to share those again in the future. Um, for now, start studying the cipher of zero. Um, look into Pluto and its significance. Um, I'm not into killing people. That's not what we do here. We actually start living. The opposite of, of live is evil. That which is trying to divide people by creating 
a three-headed God through three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Um, uh, <laughs> last thing I'm going to say, I did a search. So this three-headed deity of evil uh, created a divide and, and conquer because they fight amongst themselves. That's the long-term um desire, and it, they couldn't just do it through religion because more and more people have become disenfranchised from religion, especially women. You can't actually be, leave any book god um, if you are a feminist. So beating Muslim wife. Here's Yalid Yassin actually like doing a whole talk on um, the do's and don'ts <laughs> of beating your wife. Um... And there's a whole argument below it. Just type in beating Muslim wife, Khalid Yasin, K-H-A-L-I-D-Y-A-S-I-N, in high definition. And it's on um, a, a production. Um, I find it interesting that black men, more and more black men in, are, seem to become Muslims because they have more power. Because women in African culture, I believe it was a matriarch, and the women had the power. They were held in high regard. So it's the strong American woman, the African-American woman, who you see holding the family together. And so that's just my opinion, which I'm sure will win favor with lots of black men. I also want you to know that black men were allowed to vote before women. So white men in our country, and this is America, uh, always were allowed to vote. Uh, women weren't allowed to even um, provide testimony, hence all the witch killings. And then we had um, the slaveries. And then, you know, Lincoln, the great hero, supposedly, um, which I, I'm going to catch a lot of bash for that. I'm just putting it out there. Why did we have the Civil War in the first place? Who was behind that? Was it necessary? Uh-uh. And so then we have more and more black men becoming Islamic, because now they have power over their wives, so much so he can actually give a sermon about the justifications for beating a wife. And just listening to the first five minutes will turn your stomach. I'm going to end there uh, by simply saying that if you were aware of a parasitic uh, race that was able to live for thousands of years, how much could they F up your country and your ability to develop your spirit and your soul journey and the truth of your being and your memory and your happiness and your connection to the planet, your connection to the earth, your connection to your divine heritage? <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that. Other than to say, um, those of you that are fluoridated, probably don't care as long as you've got air conditioning in your cell phone. <laughs> Food to eat, a little, you know, sex here and there. Uh, but how many of you are happy as depression rates go up and suicides on the rise? So being cut off from the truth of your being and being herded like the cattle that you are, sheeple, into behaving in certain patterns and certain ways of acceptable norm, social norm, society, having Antifa pop up, having black people yell during riots, kill all the white people. Yeah, who cares if those very white people um, stood up for your rights during the, the Civil War time, or excuse me, Civil Rights time. <laughs> who cares? Kill them. They're white, right? So division amongst the people is the parasitics, the Draco uh, way of enslaving uh, even more because then there's more division Basically, the more corpses there are, the better off everybody is, right? So, corpse, corpse, corporations, we're not going to go there. We're going to stop. Um, but they're starting to smell a lot, aren't they? Look into corporations. Look into rights the corporate corporations have. Think about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, my. I, I, I'm going to go for a walk, and I'm going to thank the nature for its beauty, and I'm going to give gratitude to the stars for my life, the birth of my own planet, my mother earth, Gaia Sophia, and the return of the true intended God, who is 
our love creator, the center of our universe, the true, true source of our reality, is love, bliss, and joy. There's no book involved.